I think the main thing is not only to give people uh, a better place to live, but to give them, maybe for the first time in their lives, the, the proof that they could improve themselves, they could set a higher standard in every way for their families. Everybody wants the same thing, to make a good living, to have good things for their families, a nice community to live in with, with friends around. We get more out of it than we ever put in. Every so-called sacrifice turns out to be a blessing that's even greater than what we envision as a sacrifice. Since 1976, Habitat for Humanity has been a catalyst for social change, building and improving homes for more than two million people around the world. The work requires thousands of dedicated volunteers who partner with homeowners to build this basic human right. Every nail and each volunteer contributes to a home and a family with a story to tell. It's pre-dawn in Chiang Mai, Thailand, as Guan Maitip makes her way to the public market. She has cooked steamed beef and will spend the morning selling the traditional dish, which provides her only source of income. On any given morning, the streets of Chiang Mai are vibrant and alive with the smell of curry and a variety of goods. The community is a friendly one and Guan seems to enjoy meeting with her customers. I may be poor, but I keep a happy attitude. After the day's sales, Guan heads back to the makeshift shanty where she and her husband have spent the last 17 years. If you look at the overall environment here, it's not very good. It's not suitable for living. Like so many urban slums, Sumaki Pantana lies hidden from the public eye. Clicked away between a school and a hospital, the village is built over a polluted canal that really is little more than a drainage ditch filled with raw sewage. There's a bad smell that permeates the place because all the waste that comes from the apartments and the waste that comes from the markets, it all flows through the canal under our home. I am ashamed to be around others because the odor always follows me. It is hard to imagine having to live here. The rooms are crowded, the walls are made of cardboard, tin, and whatever is available. The floor is under siege by termites and is full of holes. It feels as if it could give way at any moment. During the past rainy seasons, the canal below has been known to flood, bringing waist-deep water and sewage into the home. The water would come up to our waist. We had to flee for our lives. People always ask us, how can you bear to live in these conditions? Why do you stay here? I've always been very poor. My parents had nothing, so we have always lived this way. The solution for the Maytip family was born almost 30 years ago. I cannot describe how happy I felt when we qualified for the Carter Build. As the 70s came to a close, Millard Fuller's Habitat was already an effective force for social change. By 1984, Habitat's founder was in search of a publicity boost to meet the nonprofit's ultimate goal of ending poverty housing. There's a lot of talk these days about politics and religion, but in New York this week, one political figure is practicing the sort of thing that is preached every Sunday. The Carter Project began when the First Lady and President Carter helped organize a group of 42 friends to travel to New York City. The group spent a week revitalizing an abandoned six-story apartment tenement on the Lower East Side. Among the partner families was Jessica Wallace. This was a place that was full of Disaster. I guess you could say you could you could look at it and say that someone would drop the bomb here or, or something like that. But it was a place that um, forsaken, drug land, uh, crime land. And when the Carters came with Habitat, it changed everything around here. The first time they came, uh, they cut a hole in my floor and to make my staircase go to the second floor. 
And I knew right away the way they work, these are the kind of people I want to be with. They just wanted to work and, you know, I was cool with that. It's a lot of work. Trust me, it's not easy on Habitat Work Projects, but it was fun. During the build, President Carter coyly called the five days of work one of the couple's most memorable vacations. But through this small gesture, an annual tradition was born, and the Carter's involvement thrust Habitat into the global spotlight. Jimmy Carter will return to the Uptown neighborhood this summer, and this time he'll be wearing his overalls as Habitat takes on what looks to be a very major rehab project. You know, it sounds like something out of the Guinness Book of World Records. They're able to build 21 houses in a week. President Carter was in the Uptown neighborhood this afternoon. He was dedicating a newly renovated three-flat project of his favorite Christian charity, Habitat for Humanity. What the Southern Georgia couple set out to do was to help some families, everyday people in need of a helping hand. And the Carters don't like to see people in need. This is just their way of giving back. Even more, their participation has inspired others. Since 1984, the Carter Project has grown from 42 volunteers to include hundreds, even thousands of volunteers every year. I'm very happy to meet the volunteers and thank them for coming to help build. This is our first proper house, and so I'm very happy to work together to build our home. With the help of volunteers, Habitat has served more than 400,000 families around the world. Working alongside partner families, the Carters are providing hope, promoting integrity, and even presenting an opportunity for change. President and Mrs. Carter are truly heroes for this area. They not only contributed their time and effort for a week to really help some of the families in the Benton Harbor community, but they also planted a seed. As a catalyst, um, it gave the mindset for other people that were on the outside that didn't have or weren't involved to want to be involved. It, it brought inspiration and it brought hope. And many projects have taken place since that time that have built upon that hope. With the help of the former First Family, the sweat and hard work of a global community has come to the aid of those in need of a simple and decent place to lay their head at night. And a place like this, I never could have been able to afford it without Habitat. Because of my new home, I look at the world outside as a better world. When you think of power and influence, what comes to mind? Money? Celebrity? Or do you imagine a man in denim with a tool belt, working alongside his beloved wife who, while adjusting her hard hat, is busy explaining the finer details of masonry to another Habitat volunteer. It's not just governments that have a responsibility to resolve crises. It's really the conglomerate momentum of dedicated individual citizens. And this is particularly true in a democracy to demonstrate our faith. Our faith in ourselves, our faith in each other, and our faith in God. That's what Habitat means to me.